In early 2023, Malaysia's Department of Statistics announced yet another extraordinary economic growth rate. The Malaysian economy had come out as amongst the fastest growing economies globally after posting a gross domestic product growth rate in the third quarter of 2022 of over 7%. On top of the high single digit growth rate, also saw double digit growth of over 14.2% in the previous quarter. The economy's strong growth trajectory was boosted by rising domestic demand and strong exporters, as stated by the central bank. The GDP growth further experienced another impressive 7% growth by the final financial quarter of 2022. In other words, the economy had seen impressive GDP growth quarter after quarter. The question, however, is whether Malaysia will continue this upward bull run, or will it meet its match with the slowdown of the global economy and impending recession brought about by international conflict and turmoil? Many factors may affect the Malaysian economy, but there is a strong positive sentiment that Malaysia may experience a golden age. This can be defined through a politician named Anwar Ibrahim, the newly elected Prime Minister of Malaysia, which at the same time also holds the position of the Minister of Finance. In the short three months that he has been elected as the new Prime Minister, he has implemented various policies, reforms, and rebuilding connections across the Association of Southeast Asia, which some have attributed to the economy's performance. There are three key reasons for this. The first is a positive global outlook, followed by the increased potential for foreign direct investment. And lastly, increased government spending. In late January this year, Anwar visited his neighboring country, Singapore, meeting up with Lee Hsien Long, the current prime minister of the country. The two had gone on to discuss international relations and saw three bilateral agreements signed, a digital economy, green economy, and data protection agreement. This collective agreement can then help improve the standing of the two leaders and their respective governments, a key factor in the foreign relations landscape of Malaysia. The Green Economy Bilateral Agreement will see the two countries working together to set the standard of deploying charging points for electric vehicles. It was also announced that Singapore would be importing power from Malaysia for the first time under a two-year trial, which has already secured a whopping 4 billion Singaporean dollars in foreign direct investment by the end of Anwar's visit. Further conversations will also be held for three major infrastructure projects between Singapore and Malaysia, which will lead to an increase in government spending and foreign direct investments. These discussed projects include, but are not limited to, a high-speed rail project between Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur, and Singapore, along with a Johor Bahru Singapore rapid transit system. Secondly, Anwar also had a quick visit to Indonesia upon the invitation of President Joko Widodo, which was dubbed to be efficient. The two leaders discussed matters involving the economy and bilateral investments. Topics discussed include the development of Indonesia's new capital, Nusantara, border demarcation issues that had dragged on for 60 years, and the issue of Indonesian manpower in Malaysia. Thirdly, Malaysia's private investment sphere has also managed to stay consistent, avoiding further downgrades that have plagued Malaysia in the previous decades. Fitch ratings affirmed various BBB plus sovereign credit ratings citing, among other reasons, quote, a strong ESG governance demonstrated by the increased political stability and rights and for the rule of law, institutional and regulatory quality and control of corruption. These scores reflect the high weight that the World Bank governance indicators have in our proprietary sovereign rating model for all sovereigns. Malaysia has a medium WBGI ranking at the 64th percentile, reflecting a recent record of peaceful political transitions, a moderate level of rights for political participation, moderate institutional capacity, and an established rule of law." End quote. There are also further international opportunities for further foreign direct investment, marked by Anwar Ibrahim's string of amicable and efficient visits with leaders within and beyond Asia. Germany, for example, may be looking forward to collaborating in the fields of biodiversity, ecology, and climate change, cementing Malaysia's position as a leading champion of environment, social, and governance principles in Southeast Asia. Visiting Brunei, the Prime Minister also sought to support the Malaysian investment development 
Development Authority and the Brunei Investment Agency through the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, which will go on to explore potential investments in the downstream oil and gas sector, digital economy, high-tech manufacturing, science-based agriculture, artificial intelligence, tourism, and the halal food industry, with the Malaysian digital economy projected to contribute to 25.5% of GDP in 2025, the revenue in the tourism market projected to reach 5,125 million US dollars in 2023, it is clear that Anwar Ibrahim has made a correct step in rebuilding its relationship with its neighboring economic bloc, relationships that have been pummeled in previous years by political instability and scandals. So as we can observe, many of the policies and efficient decision-making spearheaded by Anwar Ibrahim are contributing to massive foreign direct investments in infrastructure projects and beyond that will, without a doubt, contribute to Malaysia's growth. Seeing as much of Malaysia's economic growth was attributable to demand in private consumption rather than other factors, assuming the Malaysian consumer demand remains consistent, the additional foreign direct investments and positive international relations will foster a conducive environment for further economic growth. However, a key challenge stands in the way of Anwar's smooth ascent to growing the Malaysian economy. This is primarily due to the results of the 2022 Malaysian general election, in which Anwar Ibrahim's coalition was unable to secure a two-thirds supermajority, let alone a simple majority of 51% parliamentary seats in the Malaysian parliament, the Dewan Rakyat. If he had achieved this, he would have been able to make constitutional amendments to the Malaysian constitution without the need for security securing bipartisan support. Thus, the 15th Malaysian general election ended in a hung parliament. After a few days of negotiation, however, the various coalitions that had secured parliamentary seats came to an agreement. Anwar Ibrahim's coalition, Pakatan Harapan, was to form a national unity government consisting of a long-standing adversarial coalition, Barisan Nasional, the Malaysian United Democratic Alliance, the Heritage Party, and the East Malaysian factions, Sarawak Party's Alliance, and Gabungan Rakyat Sabah Party. This amounts to six different political parties in total. The problem with this is succinctly summarized by Kung Go, the head of Asia research for the New Straight Times. He writes that, quote, While we know for certain that Anwar will be the 10th Prime Minister and lead a coalition of Pakatan Harapan and Barisan Nasional, in terms of what it means for policy or cabinet appointments, we need to wait for more clarity. The Hindustan Times writes that, quote, The writing on the wall for PM Anwar is a relentless effort to strike a balance between his party's political mission and vision and reconcile differences with that of the other members of the ruling political coalition. Hence, much of the challenge for Anwar Ibrahim, should he wish to break his recent record of 14.2% growth in GDP, is contingent upon his ability to navigate the conflicting priorities in each party's manifestos and policy interests. Far beyond the short-term goal of managing the interests of the diverse coalitions that have formed the unity government, Anwar Ibrahim must sway the vote in favor of Pakatan Harapan in time for the 16th general election that will take place within years from now. Much of Anwar's first 100 days in office has seen him take steps with this objective in mind. He has demonstrated a commitment to equality and equity, evidenced by the appointment of the head of political opposition within the unity government to the role of deputy prime minister. Anwar was also quick to make amends to include a broad-based representation of minority ethnic communities in the cabinet after being criticized for having only one Malaysian Indian minister. Anwar's inclusive approach isn't just confined to racial inclusivity, though. East Malaysia, a region that has long been underrepresented in politics and government in Malaysia, was granted important positions in the makeup of Anwar's cabinet, such as, among others, Deputy Prime Minister and Prime Minister of Plantations and Commodities, Ministry of Tourism, and Ministry of Women, Family, and Community Development. He has also recently ruled out the reintroduction of the goods and services tax or any new broad-based consumption tax, which may worsen the cost of living crisis. He also dialed back on scheduled electricity tariff hikes for the public but maintained the rate increase for international corporations. He also plans to reduce subsidies that are enjoyed by the rich in Malaysia. However, as a core tenet of Anwar's administration is the intent to crack down on corruption and the abuse of political power. 
his first 100 days have not come without their fair share of raised eyebrows. For example, the appointment of the Deputy Prime Minister seems less appropriate when we consider that he is, at the time of this video, facing 40 criminal bribery charges. Some have also criticized the appointment of his daughter as his senior economic advisor after failing to secure the vote in her parliamentary constituency as an act of nepotism. Time will tell whether Malaysia will break its record of double-digit growth in the short term. However, it is clear that in the next four years, one man will be at the helm of the rapid growth that Malaysia is poised to experience.